Hey, what is up, everybody? Michael Crump back here again, talking about the latest and the greatest in PlayStation homebrew news and much, much more. So before we get into things, I just wanted to say Merry Christmas to you and your family. I know that Christmas was yesterday. I had another video where I just really wanted to thank you all for the past year and really for all of your support subscribing and liking and commenting on my videos. So I just wanted to say that again. So thank you so very much for everything that all of you do. Now getting into the news. So Gold Hen version 2.3 has been released and it is cram packed full of features. Let's just go ahead and jump straight into it. Okay, since this is an official release of Gold Hen version 2.3, it is on the GitHub versus the Ko-Fi or the support page. And what that just means is that this is obviously available to the public, to anyone to download. Whereas with the Ko-Fi page, you would have needed to have been a supporter in order to have grabbed it from there. So let's just go ahead and let's scroll down here and let's look at what was in the change log. Okay, so in version 2.3, we can see that there was added plugins support, which we will talk about greatly in just a moment. An added frames per second counter, a title ID label feature. There is MC4 cheat format support, as well as the added scanline overlay in case you may want to bring some of the retro type of feel to some of your more modern PlayStation 4 games. And then finally, there was this added internal package installation support coming from the slash data slash PKG. And really what this is going to allow you to do is, is that if you've got a PKG file and you would like for it to be installed, now you can just move that over via USB or FTP or whatever to the slash data slash PKG folder and it will install that package file for you. Now, the feature that I want to drill in here today is going to be this added plugin support. So if we go to that URL, what we can see, if we scroll down here just a little bit, basically this is Gold Hen plugins. And what this is going to allow is going to allow other people that is developing applications, etc a way that they can hook into Gold Hen and make their own plugin. So maybe think of this as something like Visual Studio Code. By itself, it's just a shell. Now, it performs lots of great functions, but the plugins typically make Visual Studio Code even better. Well, it's the same thing that's going to happen over here, at least in my opinion, with Gold Hen, is, is that now you open this up to a breadth of developers that can do things like hook into games before boot, write your own code into games in C and C++, and then hook and modify system functions. Now, since this is brand new and since it was just released, one thing that we can see is, is that there already are some plugins that's available here for us to kind of get us started. So there's an application file redirector. Obviously, this is used for things such as game video clips, background music, things of that nature where you can redirect the location of where they're stored at on the hard drive to maybe another place on the hard drive to play those files. There is a button swap. This is typically to swap the X and O around on Asia region consoles. And there's a flip rate remover. This basically removes frame rate limits for games. There is also the main one, which is the game patch, which is just patches games before boot. Now, I've talked about this a little bit in the past here, but Illusion has a, who is the author of this, has a number of different patches that he's created for games, such as 60 frames per second. What this is going to allow you to do is, is that now you'll be able to apply those patches very easily and you won't have to do things like remodify or make a brand new fake package file in order to implement those patches. And then the other one here is the no share watermark. And what this does is removes image watermarks, videos, and screenshot blocks 
from the different types of games. Now, if we scroll up here just a little bit, there is some getting started information. And in that, it says load gold hen, enable the options to load the plugins in the plugin menu, download the plugins from the release page, extract downloaded plugins into this folder, and then add the plugins you want to load in the data gold in plugins.ini. And then per game, plugin sections are recommended over putting everything in the default. It will by default run everything that's inside of this default section here. But then if you've got just a particular title ID, then this will only run this AFR and the no share watermark just for this one. Now, he's saying here that it's not recommended to put everything over here in default, but to do it per game basis. Now, the one that you will always want on your default is going to be this one right here. So if you're wondering how do you set all of this up, well, before there was a large number of steps. And so what I've done is I've tried to make it a little bit easier, and I've got a pack that I will include in the description below, which has everything you really need to get started. And all you gotta do is copy and paste it over. So let's go ahead and let's look at the pack that I've created first. Okay, so here is the pack that was created. And I just wanted to go through each folder just so you know what is what. So there is a cheats folder in here. And these are all of the cheats that you could typically and you should typically maintain with the Gold Hen Cheat Manager. This is just a current snapshot of all of the cheats at this given moment in time. Next off, there is a brand new folder, and this is just for the patches that I was just talking about. So there is a JSON patch folder, and if we go into one of these JSON files here, you can see that this one is for Drive Club, and this one is a 60 frames per second patch. And the rest of this is the instructions on how that patch is going to be applied. And so what you can see is that there's a number of different patches in here. There is also a folder that's called settings, which has the settings for those particular games. So let's go back to Gold Hen. Next up, there is this plugins folder right here where I've went ahead and I have grabbed every single plugin and I've put them all in this folder again, just so you can copy and paste. There's a temp folder that has nothing in there. And then there is these two configuration files. One is called config.ini. Let's go ahead and open that one up first since you're probably the most familiar with it. Okay, so this is my configuration of how I like Gold Hen. So obviously the bin loader is turned on by default. The FTP server is also turned on by default. I have the K-Log server turned on. And here is where some of my specific cheat settings are found. So by default, I'm doing things like showing the title ID. There's obviously things like the menu is turned on to be enabled, the menu combo is enabled, and then a few other things. For the game overlay, by default, I have the frames per second enabled. It is obviously visible. Then, then down into the scan lines, for my purposes, I don't necessarily want the scan lines, so I have those turned off. Again, you can modify these as you would like through Gold Hen. You won't have to go in and manually edit this file. And so I just have that option turned off. And then by default, I have the plugin loader turned on. That is going to be how the configuration will work once you load up Gold Hen 2.3. And now there's also this, which is also brand new, which is the plugins.ini. And so from here, what you can see is just like that readme by default, I have the game patch turned on. But then if you wanted to enable any of those other plugins that's in that folder, all you would need to do is just come in and uncomment this line right here, which is basically just delete that semicolon and you would have that available. You don't have to manually configure the location or maybe, you know, mistype what the name is. It's just all there for you. So if I wanted to, for example, enable the no share blocks, which removes the image watermark, video and screenshot blocks from the game, 
then I would simply come back to this default and I would uncomment that and now I would just simply save the file. Obviously, we're not going to do that simply because I don't want all of that turned on right now. Now, if it was a game, a game specific, again, you can get the title ID if you use my little pack because I turn on the title ID by default or else you can turn it on by using Goldian. Here, you can do it per the actual game itself. So in this example right here, there is nothing turned on for this 99999. If you wanted to turn it on, again, you just simply come in here and you would delete this semicolon here. Again, if you wanted to maybe add some of these other ones to it, you could copy and paste those from this section down to the game section itself. Okay, and so that is really the pack. Okay, so what I have done is I've went ahead and I've connected to my PlayStation 4 via FTP. And all I need to do now is I need to navigate to the data folder. And then we can see that we've got a folder in here that is already just called Gold Hen. Now, this folder is obviously from a previous version of Gold Hen. So it doesn't have all the plugins and all of the other stuff that I mentioned just a few moments ago. And so what I'm gonna do in my instance is, is that I'm gonna simply drag and drop my gold hen folder over to my PlayStation 4, and I am going to overwrite everything that is already in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and press OK here. And while that is going, I did want to say, just make sure that before you overwrite all of the files, that you are okay with the settings that I discussed a little bit earlier. Um, another option that you could do is, is that you could just make a backup of your own folder before you override it with some of the configuration and the changes that I've made, just in case you maybe want to go back to your settings. Obviously, all of this you can do through the Gold Hen menu once we get it booted up. So once this finishes, I'm going to jump back over to my PS4 and we'll go from there. Okay, so now that has finished up, it is a good idea to go ahead and just check and make sure that all of the files copied over successful. So I'm just going to jump in really quick to PS4 Explorer 2.0 and we're gonna to navigate to our data folder and then we're gonna go into Gold Hen. And from what I can tell right here, they all look good. So we're going to go into plugins here, and that is exactly the plugins that I had a little bit earlier. So at this point, what I would advise is to go ahead and just reboot your PlayStation 4, because if you've already got a version of Gold Hen running, I've just found that it's best to kind of start from a unjailbroken PlayStation 4 before you run Gold Hen 2.3. So I'm going to go ahead and reboot mine and I'd encourage you to do the same. Okay, my system just rebooted and as you can tell, I do not have Gold Hen loaded here. We're going to begin by going over to our internet browser. Now, what I'm going to use is going to be Echo Stretch's 7 in 1 site. You can access it by simply going to es7in1.site. And now one other thing that I would say, though, is, is that if you went to his site or really any other site prior to 2.3 coming out, you probably want to go into your web browser, you know, and close the pages, clear your internet cache, you know, delete cookies, all of that good stuff before proceeding. Okay, so it is asking me to insert my USB drive into the PlayStation 4. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now, and now I'm gonna press OK. And it says that the jailbreak is done, so I'm gonna take that back out. And now we can hit the OK button here. By the way, I've never seen OK be highlighted as it is right now in my entire time of doing PlayStation homebrew news. So anyway, that's really an odd behavior for the OK button right now. But I'm going to go ahead and press it. And there we go. It says Gold 10 version 2.3 has been loaded. We can see now the FTP port is listening. Bin loader is now turned on. Again, these are all of the settings that I showed you just a little bit earlier that I configured. 
So now we're going to go ahead and we can jump over to Gold Hen with the shortcut here today. And what we're going to go down to is just to the plugin setting. And again, if you use my pack, this will be turned on by default. And so now you may be wondering, well, how do I actually turn on a specific patch? And so that is where we will come back and we will go ahead and we will take advantage of the Gold Hen Cheat Manager. So let's go ahead and let's run that application. What you will find is we've got an option here for patches. So I am going to go into the patches and we can see that right now there is 223 games that currently we can modify. And again, we've already turned on everything that we need to in the previous step. So all you'll need to do from here on is to just modify it via this UI. So let's go ahead and let's pick a game and we will pick Elden Ring. And I know that I am on 28863 with cost. It shows this little star right here. Now you can filter by pressing the triangle button to which versions of the game is actually installed or it has detected that you have installed. So we'll go to Elden Ring first and we're gonna press X here. And here we go, here is some of the amazing stuff that you can do. So you can turn on 60 FPS. This is for the base console. Again, this is actually a PS4 fat that I'm running on here. And there is a couple of additional resolution patches that you can turn on if you would like to. What I'll also do is I'll turn on the skip intro logos. And now that is really it. Uh, so we can go ahead now and we can navigate over to Elden Ring. And again, you will know the game that you have simply by the title ID because I've turned that on by default. And so right here you can see there is the CUSA 28863. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to start this game now. And there we go. We see two patches applied, four patch lines applied. And so down at the bottom, you'll see the frames per second counter, which is also new in this release. But by default, if again, if you used my pack, it was already turned on. And we won't have any of those intros. Oh, this is already so much better. So there we go. We did not have any of the intros. This is now, you know, so much easier to use, at least in my opinion. And so that is the patches feature, which is absolutely amazing. So we'll head back over to our gold hen again. And I just wanted to run quickly through everything else that was new here. So we talked about the plugin support. Again, if you wanted to turn off those plugins, well, you could come here and turn that back off. Next up was the frames per second. So that is right over here in the game overlay. Again, you can't change some of these values because the game is currently running. Again, this is on by default. And you just saw a sample of it when we were inside of Elden Ring at the bottom left hand side of your screen. Then there was the title ID support, which is back up here in cheat settings. And right here is the title ID. And this shows in this example, the title ID and the app version, which again, you can just see right there. The next feature was MC4 cheat support, which for the most part, you won't have to ever worry about that as long as you use Gold Hand Cheat Manager. And then finally, there was the scan line overlay and we can go into game overlay and we can turn that on or off. Again, this kind of gives you that retro feel to your games. Not something that I'm looking for, but others may want that, especially if they're playing some maybe Sonic or some of the O's games that came out in prior years. Well, anyway, that's going to do it. I hope this pack helps you out a little bit, and I hope this video helps you out. Thank you so very much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Michael, out!